Hello and welcome back to Mirai Creations. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Mirai Sophia and I love everything hand embroidery. So it's been a hot minute since I've last posted to YouTube and since then I've opened up a new Etsy shop called The Embroidery Loft. In today's video, we're going to be going over some basic stitches to help you get started with hand embroidery. I've created this new hand embroidery pattern that covers different types of basic stitches for beginners and this pattern is available for free with every single item in the embroidery loft store. So in this video we're going to be going through every single stitch and we'll be showing you the step by step way of how to do each one. Also included is a PDF that has the step by step photos of how to do each of these stitches. So you don't have to watch the video entirely, you can just reference the PDF and if you need specific help with another type of stitch, you can just look at the timestamps below to find the stitch that you need help with. So without further ado, let's get started. The first stitch that we're going to do is the straight stitch for a flower. So from the outside circle, bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front, then direct your needle towards the center. This itself is the straight stitch. Next we're going to repeat this, again bringing your needle from the back of the hoop to the front and then directing it towards the center. So you want to do this in a circular direction until the flower itself is complete. The next stitch that we're going to learn is the French knot. So bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front in the center of the flower. The next thing we're going to do is wrap the thread around three times your needle and then we're going to take that needle and push it back into that original hole that you just created. Here I'm going to be using three strands of floss but you can also vary the amount of strands you want to use to create a smaller or a thicker French knot. The next stitch that we're going to be learning is the stem stitch. Bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front. Next, direct your needle about one stitch length away and bring it from the front to the back. Next, you're going to direct your needle to be right in the middle of the start and the end. Bring your needle through and then pull that thread taut. You're then going to repeat this moving along the stem outline and it will create this nice rope-like texture. Next we're going to learn the fishbone stitch. So starting from the tip of the leaf, you're going to bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front. Next you're going to direct it about one stitch length away down the center of the leaf. Once that stitch is complete, you're going to bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front, but you're going to start your stitch ever so slightly to the right of the stitch that you just did. And you're going to direct it to just below the stitch that you completed. You're going to repeat this on the left side. After that's complete, you're going to go from the right side to the left side, vice versa, all the way down the leaf. And this will create a really nice fishbone design. Here I'm using the straight stitch again to show you that you can use it to make snowflakes or very small sparkles as well. Here I'm starting from one end of the sparkle and I'm directing my stitch to span the length of the outline. Now we're going to learn how to do the satin stitch that is slightly angled and this is perfect for flower petals and leaves. So starting from the top of the flower petal, bring your needle up from the back of the hoop to the front. Direct your needle to span the length of the flower petal. The next stitch should start very close from the one that you just completed. Again, you're going to span the length of the flower petal, but you're not going to go all the way down to the center. You're going to repeat this on the right side as well as the left side. Once you start getting towards the edges of the flower petal, this is when you're going to direct your stitch ever so slightly towards the center again. That way it will have a nice angled but smooth appearance. Once you have finished those angled satin stitches, you can complete a French knot stitch in the middle of this flower. We're now going to learn how to do the back stitch, which is also really great for flower stems. 
From the base of the stem, bring your needle up from the back of the hoop to the front. Direct your needle about one stitch length away and then pull the thread through. Your second stitch will start a little bit higher and then you're going to direct that new stitch to where your first stitch just finished. Repeat this along the outline of the stem until it is complete. Once you've finished the back stitch, you can go ahead and use the angled satin stitches to fill in the leaves. And then I have another example here of a very small flower with the angled satin stitch. So the next stitch here is again the satin stitch, but it is not angled. In this example, the flower centers are going to be horizontal satin stitches. It is the same technique, but you don't need to angle your stitches at all. Here I'm showing some more examples of the satin stitches with this pink flower. It's perfect for the angled satin stitch. And then this other flower here that's multicolored, that is perfect for anything like a chrysanthemum type of flower. In the center of this, I've also used the French knot to fill in the space. The next stitch that we're going to be learning is the split stitch. Here we're going to start at the base of the coral, bringing your needle up from the back of the hoop to the front. Then you're going to direct your needle about one stitch length away and then complete that stitch. Your second stitch should actually start right in the middle of your first stitch and it's going to be splitting those strands of floss right in the middle there. So again, you're going to complete another stitch while the first stitch is split down the middle. You're going to repeat this technique all the way down until the outline is complete. One of the great things about the split stitch is that you can actually change the color. So here on the far left of the coral, I'm starting with a darker color and then I'm working my way up into a lighter pink color. To achieve this, all what you need to do is take a new color and essentially start using the split stitch where you just left off. The next stitch that we're going to be learning is the chain stitch. So bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front. Then you're going to direct the needle to that hole that you just made. You're going to form a small loop and then at the top of that loop, you're going to bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front once again. You can then pull the needle and the thread to make it slightly tighter. And then again, you can form another loop and repeat those steps all the way down the outline until you're done your chain. When you're done your chain, you can then do a simple stitch at the top to secure that chain in place. Now in this example here, I'm using three strands of floss and on the far right we have a thicker chain and that was done with six strands of floss. So here I'm working from three strands, then I'm going to do four strands, five strands and then finally six strands of floss working from left to right. And this will show you the different thickness of the chain stitch if you're using different number of strands. The next stitch we're going to learn is the lazy daisy which is pretty similar to the chain stitch. So from the center, bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front. Then you're going to form a loop and bring your needle to the back again. So you're going to form that little loop and then from the top of the loop, bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front and secure it in place. And you want to make sure that these loops are a little bit on the loose side, that way it's not pulled too tight. And here I'm just going to add a little bit of more embellishment to the actual Lazy Daisy stitch by incorporating a straight stitch in the middle. The next stitch that we're going to learn is the rose stitch or the woven wheel stitch. What you're going to do first is create five straight stitches all directed towards the center. When that's complete, you're going to bring your needle from the back of the hoop to the front, starting near the center of the circle. Then you're going to weave your needle through the spokes of the wheel. Essentially here we are skipping every other spoke, going in a counterclockwise direction. Continue doing this until the rose is complete. In the second variation of the rose stitch, we have an open center. 
Again, start with completing the five spokes or the five straight stitches in the center. Afterwards, you're going to weave your needle through the spokes just like before. And here I'm actually going to be doing some color changes in between so you can see what kind of creativity or variations you can do with the row stitch. Now for this row stitch, it does have a giant hole in the middle, so you can actually fill this in with the French knot stitch, but here I'm going to be using some very loose straight stitches. So I'm going to bring my needle from the back of the hoop to the front and make a very small straight stitch, but I'm not going to pull it all the way through. Instead, I'm going to create this type of loop, and then I'm going to create more of these to give it a three-dimensional effect. The next stitch we are going to be learning is the long short stitch. Here I'm going to be starting with a short straight stitch and then afterwards I'm going to bring my needle very close to where I just started and then I'm going to create a long stitch right beside it. So I'm going to repeat this going from left to right until that top row is complete. Afterwards, I'm going to pick another color that's very similar but a slightly different shade and then I'm going to do more straight stitches following the guides here. When that row is complete, I'm then going to work on the last row using the darkest shade. The next stitch we're going to be learning is the basket or weave stitch. We're going to start by creating vertical lines or vertical straight stitches that span across the basket. Next what we're going to do is we're going to weave our needle in between the different vertical stitches that we just created. So we're going to start at the top and work our way across with the weave. Afterwards we're just going to secure that in the back. Our second row will start just below that row we completed, but this time we're going to alternate the weave. So we're going to work from top to bottom until the weave is complete. And as you can see here, this is a very loose type of basket weave. Now if I had those vertical stitches closer together, we could create a tighter weave, which you see here in this bow example. Now we're going to learn the whipped back stitch. So the first thing we're going to do is complete the back stitch for the handle. Afterwards, we're going to start in one of the corners and we're going to bring our needle from the back of the hoop to the front. Then we're going to weave our needle through in between each back stitch and this will create a nice rope-like texture. And this stitch is actually great if you're using more than one type of color. Now we're going to learn how to do the fluffy fur technique, which is just done with the straight stitch but staggered. So here I'm using six strands of floss and I'm just going to create a straight stitch. My stitches are going to be at the bottom first and we're going to fill out this bottom row using multiple staggered straight stitches. In between each stitch, I'm just going to fluff the thread with the back of my needle to give it a nice fluffy texture. Once that first row is done, I'm then going to move up to a second row. And again, I'm just staggering my stitches in between the row I have below. Throughout all these stitches, I'm going to be gradually changing the color of my thread. This will give it a more natural looking appearance. And it'll also show you how you can create this type of 3D look. Now we're going to jump back to the French knot stitch which we previously learned. Here I'm going to be using 6 strands of floss followed by 4, 3, 2, and 1. And the point of this is so that you can see the different thickness using different number of floss strands. And now we're going to be doing some more satin stitches for practice. So these flower leaves are going to be done with an angled satin stitch and here I'm using 6 strands of floss to make it a nice fluffy appearance. And then for the actual flower petals, I'm going to be using three strands of floss and the satin stitch but in a vertical direction. And for our last stitch, we're going to be learning the running stitch. This is essentially like the straight stitch, so you're going to be bringing your needle from the back of the hoop to the front and then you're going to be working your way down the outline. 
Now this stitch is actually perfect for backing your embroidery hoop at the end because when you pull on the thread it will actually gather all of that fabric and it will have a nice finished look at the back. And for the finishing touches of this embroidery hoop, I'm going to be removing the pen markings with my hair dryer. I'm using a heat erase pen in this example, and if I apply heat to it, the ink actually disappears. And that's it, you've now completed your stitching sampler. I hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for more fun tutorials from Miri Creations. Thank you, and have fun stitching!